the different Vedic rituals with the attainment of heavenly planets as their objective. Uh, and then the impersonal salvationists are trying to just get away from it all by merging into the Brahman, losing their personal existence and uh, merging with the oneness of it all. And this is a kind of spiritual suicide. I mean, even elevation to the heavenly planets is superior to that. Huh? So uh, these people are compared to thieves and burglars. Why? Because they, they steal away the time and the energy of people and engage them in false things, phony things, things which will not give them the actual thing that they are looking for. People are looking for happiness. They're looking for eternal life. Everybody really wants spiritual love, uh, love of God, ecstatic love of Krishna. This is what people really want. But they can't get it from these other processes. They can only get some pale imitation, some temporary substitute. But because people have a lack of knowledge, they can't make a distinction between these different processes and devotional service. So we are offering them the real process, or Rupa Goswami is offering the real process, uh, based on so many spiritual quotations from the authentic Vedas. But he's saying that we should not discuss or describe the devotional service and its different analytical aspects to these dry speculators and false renouncers. Why? Because they'll misuse it. They'll just start arguing about it. Uh, they like to argue about everything. Uh, they can't take instruction. They can't take discipline. They can't take uh, even good advice, good friendly advice. But they'll go on arguing and speculating, and because of that, they're falling down uh, from their position of, of uh, false renunciation. Therefore, those who are not devotees can never achieve the benefits of devotional service. For them, the subject of devotional service is always very difficult to understand. Only persons who have dedicated their lives unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can relish the real nectar of devotion. Only persons who have dedicated their lives. Dedicate your life means to make a promise, means to make a commitment. Dedication means that you, the meaning of your existence becomes pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, other than that, your existence has no meaning, has, has no significance outside of that. Uh, that's real renunciation. That is the complete renunciation. And once you attain that, you never go back to any uh, smaller platform a lower platform uh, or a material platform of life because this is the platform on which love of Godhead is possible. Uh, it's not possible on any other platform. If you want to have, uh, you know, uh, a hobby of spiritual life, that's okay. But don't expect to understand devotional service to Krishna that way. If you want to take a guru as a social f fashion uh, or a part-time kind of, uh, you know, on-again, off-again affair, don't expect to, to make any progress in actual devotional service. You may make some progress in religion. You may make some pro progress in economic development sense gratification or even liberation, but you won't make progress in devotional service because devotional service is beyond all of these things. Uh, and, and if you can't understand what I'm talking about, that means you're not qualified to hear this. Uh, what it means is that a person who is afraid to make a commitment, who's afraid to take responsibility for pleasing Krishna, 
person who's afraid to surrender, who's afraid to give up their attachments in this material world, can never understand these things that we're talking about. Oh, they can pretend. They can throw words around. Uh, they can buy, buy up a few $2 and $5 dollar words, throw them around. Uh, but when it comes to actual doing, huh? okay, let's see how, how good is your brain surgery. But you have to do it on yourself. You see. This process of devotional service is a process of transformation of consciousness from material to spiritual. But consciousness is completely subjective. So you have to perform the process on yourself, on your own consciousness. Huh? Now let's see what, ki what kind of a brain surgeon are you? Can you actually perform this process so that your consciousness is changed? See? If so, then you have understood. If not, then you still need more uh, instruction. You need more learning. You need more uh, service to induce Krishna to give this information, because he doesn't give it to everybody. The words in these books are transcendental, but they're not the same as the experience. Without the experience, the words don't really make full sense. So you have to purify yourself. You have to get beyond anarta nivritti to come to the stage of bhava. And if you have not purified yourself to that stage, then you cannot claim to have these experiences. Uh, that's very obvious. That's very obvious. When there are still dirty things within the heart, covering the, the original consciousness with some material attachment, then no one can claim to have real knowledge of devotional service. Let us see by their activities. Uh, if their activities are completely spiritual and show no material qualification or quality at all, then we can understand that this person can have some direct understanding or knowledge of devotional service. Uh, but when a person is engaged in all kinds of mundane activities and is shown to be uh, impure at heart in so many ways, then there's, there's no way they can understand this or perform it. What to, what to speak of, teach it. Thus, when one transcends the status of material consciousness and thus becomes situated on the highest platform of pure goodness, one is understood to have cleansed the heart of all material contamination. In that pure stage of life, one can taste this nectar and this tasting capacity is technically called rasa, or transcendental mood. See, told you. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta summary study of the second division of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in the matter of general devotional service. So that's the end of the second wave. Hare Krishna. So. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk with you about today is that something I've been thinking about for a long, long time. And the events of the last few days have, have brought this into really clear perspective. Basically, what it is is that we need to have well, you know, so far we have four regulative principles, right? No meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex, no gambling or speculation. I think we need a fifth regulative principle, huh? which is truthfulness. That should be the first quality of a Pick up the mic. Huh? This is actually the first quality of a devotee. Yes. The, the, and because it's the first one, it's the most important one. Yes, right. So <laughs> There are many lists. What he's referring to is there are many lists in the scriptures of qualities of a, an advanced personality. Uh, and in those, I can think of three or four, maybe five. Yeah, because there's one also in the, in the Uddhava Gita at the end of the Bhagavatam, 11th canto. 
where the first item is truthfulness. Uh, the very first. So we can understand that without truthfulness, none of the other desirable qualities or spiritual uh, stages of growth are even possible. A person may be very learned. Uh, we've seen this, you know, like university professors and people like this, and they can quote so many books and stuff like this. But because they're not sincere, because they don't have truthfulness, all those knowledge is ruined. Uh, so we've had a lot of uh, uh, difficult experiences in the last few days because of lack of truthfulness, lack of sincerity on the part of certain people. And um, I think we need to start giving this a formal definition 